topic that I knew nothing about after quitting my job one month ago, but since then I put a lot of time and energy into researching this topic, so I feel like I can confidently speak to you about what your options are as far as health insurance if you choose to quit your job. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let me first start by saying that I absolutely hate how the health insurance industry is set up. If you go to the grocery store and you buy a box of cereal, you know exactly how much you're going to pay for that box of cereal. But if you go to the doctor's office for a doctor's visit, you have no clue how much you're going to pay for that doctor's visit until you get a bill in the mail one month later. But it's for this reason that you absolutely need health insurance, so I'm not even going to consider going uninsured as an option. Let's strike that off the list right from the beginning. All right, I'm already sick of sitting on that couch, so let's go for a walk. I've narrowed it down to three options for health insurance after quitting your job. The first one is COBRA. The second one is health insurance through the marketplace. And the third one is short-term health insurance. And if you don't know what any of those are, don't worry, I'll get into each one of those right now. Let's first start off by talking about COBRA. Don't worry about what COBRA stands for. It's an acronym that I'll put up here on the screen for you. But COBRA is basically a law that allows you to keep your health insurance with your current employer for up to 18 months after you quit your job. The catch here is that you're going to be responsible for the full health insurance premium amount every month. For example, when I was employed at my previous employer, I paid $37 a month for health insurance. And my company paid $437 towards my health insurance. So if I would elect to continue with my health insurance from my previous employer with COBRA, I would be responsible for paying the full amount, which is something like $474 per month for health insurance. So although COBRA allows you to keep your current health insurance with your employer, it's going to be your, probably your most expensive option. Your next option is getting health insurance through the health insurance marketplace, also known as healthcare.gov, also known as Obamacare, also known as the Affordable Care Act. Now these aren't all the same things, I'm just hoping that one of them rings a bell and you're like, ah, yes, I remember that. But anyway. I went online to healthcare.gov and did a search for my age, my location, and my income for 2018, and I got a list of 15 plans that were available to me in my area. Now the problem with these plans are that the majority of them have a very high out-of-pocket maximum, close to like $7,500, and that is just too much for me. Additionally, most of them only cover me within the area that I live in, so for someone like me who wants to travel, I need at least a plan that covers me nationwide. There were three PPO options that cover me nationwide, but these happened to be the most expensive plans out of the bunch. And they were somewhere between like $500 and $700 a month. Now, it's worth pointing out that if you make less than four times the federal poverty level in 2018, you're eligible for a premium tax credit for your health insurance plans. So the federal poverty level in 2018 is $12,000 per year. So if you make less than $48,000 per year in 2018, you will receive a premium tax credit. For example, I went on healthcare.gov and said I was gonna make $40,000 this year. They came back and said that I am eligible for a $282 per month tax credit. This means that instead of paying just say $582 per month for a health plan, I would only have to pay $300 per month for that same exact health plan. So if it makes sense for your situation, you should definitely take advantage of this subsidy. Now your third and final option for health insurance after quitting your job is something called short-term health insurance. As the name implies, short-term health insurance are health insurance plans that are available for a limited period of time. Up until October of 2018, short-term health insurance plans can be up to three months in duration, but after that the law changes and short-term health insurance plans can be up to a year in duration. Now the monthly premium for me as a 28 year old living in Pennsylvania is right around 100 bucks a month. This is drastically less than what you would see with a COBRA plan or a plan from healthcare.gov because short term health insurance is not comprehensive coverage. That means that you're not going to be covered for things such as a pregnancy or prescription drugs or pre-existing conditions. And for this reason the government does not recognize short term health plans as minimum essential coverage so you will be responsible for paying a tax penalty for being technically uninsured in the government's eyes. So we went onto the IRS's website and figured out what my monthly tax penalty would be. And this came out to be somewhere between $60 and $80 per month. 
and I'm completely okay with paying this because even when you consider the tax penalty and the monthly premium for the short-term health insurance plan, you're looking at being covered in an emergency situation such as if I get in a car accident or if I break my arm, and I'll be paying much, much less than any of the other plans that we talked about today. All right, guys, so now that you know your options for health insurance after quitting your job, you probably know which option that I'm going to choose, and that is a short-term health insurance plan through a company called National General. Now, the plan for me is to get a one-month plan through National General, which will carry me into October. And as I mentioned before, the law is changing in October, at which point I can purchase a short-term health plan for the duration of one year. Now, I will have to pay a tax penalty from September through December of this year, but as of January 1st of 2019, that tax penalty goes away and the government is no longer requiring us as American citizens to have proper health insurance. So in 2019, I will be covered by my short-term health insurance plan, and that is sufficient for me. All I really need is something for catastrophic or emergency situations. So the bottom line is for me as someone who is relatively healthy and wants to travel and really only needs health insurance for emergency situations, short-term health insurance makes perfect sense for me. Now, as I said before, your situation may be different and you need to consider all factors when making your decision. But my hope is that this video today has helped you at least get in the right direction for figuring out what type of health insurance you're gonna choose if you choose to quit your job. So if it's your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. My name is Tony Florida. I make videos like this every day. So if you like what you see, please subscribe. For everybody else, thank you again for subscribing. Please keep those thumbs up coming as I appreciate them very greatly and I appreciate each and every one of you. I will see everybody tomorrow. Hold on, don't go just yet. I have one more thing to say and that is that I have a blog post on my website, tonyflorida.com with all the information that we talked about today and more. So if you're interested in this topic, definitely check it out. The link is below. I will see you guys tomorrow. I got to take this phone call. Goodbye.